Welcome to the number five version of IoT Recruiting Podcast. We're pleased to be joined today by Dr. Marcel Vollmer of the Chief Digital Officer of SAP Ariba. Welcome, Marcel. Thank you for joining us. Many thanks, Bill. It's a great pleasure being here today. We wanted to explore a little bit um, your role as a, as a Chief Digital Officer, Marcel, because there's a lot of uh, people out there that may not know exactly what a Chief Digital Officer does. What do you do on a daily basis as a Chief Digital Officer? Well, Bill, that's really a great question, and I can tell you one thing. Um, it's really amazing and also one learning on my end that uh, you're perfectly right. Nobody exactly knows what is exactly what a Chief Digital Officer does. And when you talk to two, three others, so my peers in that role, basically I can tell you one thing for sure. Everybody is doing something different. So there is no common um, common standardized job definition, job description, if you want to wanna say. So basically, the good thing is that there is a word digital in, digitalization, and basically, this means it must be somehow important, and currently, everybody talks about the digitalization, and um, that's exactly also where my core focus is about. I help customers to make it very simple. I help customers to define a digital transformation strategy as well as execute on on that. So basically, that's my daily job, starting from really connecting to customers, introducing also our teams on the SAP side, SAP Ariba side, because we need also to think about how to finance a digital transformation. And therefore, it's a beautiful opportunity thinking about the procurement savings and supply chain savings, what you can achieve, as well as the automation of transactions, which will reduce your cost base. So basically, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's great. How has this role changed over the last 10 years? Obviously, you've been in this area you know, for pretty much your whole career, but how has it changed in the last 10 years, do you think, or even the last five years? Basically, I think 10 years back, um, I haven't heard about the title of Chief Digital Officer, to be, to be honest. And I, I did a little bit of research, and I figured out that in Europe in the last years, I think it was three or four years back, we had only about... Um, uh, less than 300 chief digital officers with this title. Um, I did a search on, on LinkedIn um, at this point in time. And basically, I think now this doubled um, at least um, every year because the role is getting more and more prominent because everyone sees and understands I need to do something. We need to think about the digital transformation of our own company. And that's basically also why I believe this role is fairly new and it's still in a way of getting defined what exactly to cover and how to cover that. And therefore, the role starts from basically being a kind of CIO, Chief Information Officer, running IT and transforming the IT until the other end, I would say, defining new business models. How is it uh, and what is it what a company wants to do to make money in the future? And I think in, in this bandwidth, the role is getting defined more and more, and there are so many different variances in it. And from my understanding, if I um, would do or would get asked the question about the future perspective, I can tell you um, this role needs to disappear probably in the next five to seven years because if companies still driving digital transformation in that definition of the role, I think something is wrong because the companies need to do something now. And therefore, this role either gets defined with really a clear definition on what the purpose is, or basically the pure digital transformation work needs to get finished very soon. That's great. There's so many new technologies emerging and, and all the buzzwords we hear like artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, cloud, they're all over the place. What is it that you see companies should do today to catch up with those trends and possibly use the right technology to take advantage of some of these new trends? So basically, when we talk about these passwords, and you mentioned some of them, I don't repeat them now, um, I think a company needs first to define what is your business model today, what are applicable technologies you can really use. For example, can you drive some automation with machine learning and artificial intelligence? And it can st uh, start very small in a shared services, for, for example, where you start with basically allocating cash and automating some incoming processes. But you should also think a little bit about can you probably fundamentally change your supply chain? Can you change your production? Uh, robotics might be one opportunity for that. Or do you want to 
want to uh, streamline and consolidate your your IT systems, cloud would be a beautiful opportunity for that. So I think that you need, number one, define your business model for the future. What is it really what you want to do and which of these technologies might be best to help you? Number two is what are the existing processes, what you have already, and basically how can you leverage technology which exists already today to basically become better, more productive, reduce your cost, and really focus on a high degree of automation. Like some of the other people in the industry, when you look at things like artificial intelligence, where you think it's going to be a get rid of many, many jobs, how do you come down on that? So the question is really great, and I get this very often. What is it what really artificial intelligence will do? There's a McKinsey study out saying that 51% of the job activities today could be potentially automated in the future, so might disappear. And basically, that's something where I would say, um, yes, it might be applicable for the job activity, But basically, the job activity is only one component. It does not mean that the jobs, the people will lose their jobs. So my honest belief is that despite all these new technologies, we will still have the people operating and running the business. So the future functions, the future company will be powered by data, but driven by people. So therefore, new jobs like somebody defining and writing the code for artificial intelligence. We all use smartphones today. So basically, the apps is a multi-billion dollar market which has been generated starting back in 2007 when Steve Jobs um, introduced the first um, iPhone. So basically, all these new roles, data scientists, data architects, now somebody who is developing drones, who is thinking about robotics and how to automate further. And I think overall, we have seen so many waves of the technology which got developed and basically every technology was impacting our life and how we run our business but basically at the end we have more people on earth and we have more jobs than ever and my belief is this will continue in a different way and probably with a different pace but basically there will definitely beautiful job opportunities in the future. How is SAP Ariva helping companies to drive digital transformation? Basically, we do two things. Number one is we want to look and understand your business model. Is there anything where we can help? And I believe definitely everything what is related, how you run your IT systems, how you run your ERP, your enterprise resource planning system, but also how to basically invest in the right areas in running your supply chain, running your procurement organization, or how do you how do you use your external workforce? Uh, but basically also technologies like IoT. I think we have a beautiful set of technologies. We bundle this all under the umbrella of SAP Leonardo. And with that, I think we have definitely the future technology, what we can use and where companies can get help on our end to basically invest in the right areas to become ready and become fit for the future business model they want to run. On the Ariba side, um, in particular, I think it's a beautiful opportunity, and I'm a former chief procurement officer. Basically, we help companies to leverage the purchasing power and reduce the cost by automation. So simple it is. And this is what we do with our end-to-end source-to-pay, source-to-settle cloud solutions, but also with the Ariba network, where we connect business partners and really can ensure that you can focus on the more strategic value-adding activities, especially in procurement, by driving supplier innovations, uh, focusing on risk management, or also ensuring that you have a sustainable supply chain. That's what we do on the SAP Ariba side. That's great. What challenges are you seeing with your customers are having in you know, undergoing these digital transformation projects from a, a you know, from a staffing perspective and, and finding the right people and also maybe potentially having uh, parts of the organization work with each other a little bit differently than they have in the past. Yeah, I think overall, when we talk about change, it is something what we all have experienced or heard already before. Basically, there's a change curve. And you need to go through the valley of tears and really you need to adapt to the, to the new, um, new way on how we work and basically what all this change will, will be. Um, this also means that you need to think about basically two elements in, for your workforce. Number one is 
um, you need to develop your own people to ensure that they have jobs in the future, that you can, can leverage the experience they have and also basically um, provide them with the trainings to put the skills needed for the future. It might not be possible for everyone, but basically I think you need to have concept on your own, own teams that you have in your organization. Number two is exactly what you are saying about the recruiting side. How can you ensure that you are attractive as a company to, to really um, get the interest of the right people? Because there are all these big tech companies out, the Googles, Facebooks, Amazons in the world, and basically everybody is looking for the resources, developing the buzzwords, what we mentioned, work in artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, or one of these areas, and everybody wants to get that. So therefore, you need also to define how can you be attractive for the labor market out there, for the millennials joining now the labor, labor market. And this is exactly what a challenge is. If you are not one of these big brands, you need to think about your value proposition. And therefore, you need to get probably also the right help to position your organization to define the branding for your company, but also then to find the right partners to ensure that you get access to the right people helping you to survive in the future and to have the right business model in place in the future. Thank you very much, Marcel, for your insights today. We look forward to speaking with you at a later time on some other options, but uh, thanks again for your time. You're well welcome, Bill. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.